I won't apologize because if it wasn't for me going down that route, I would have never ended up where I am right now. But I will say that I have no shame at all at saying to you, throw away every book, every tape, and every video I ever did on the subject of tithing unless it lines up with this. I've, I've done some corrective teaching in the, in, the, in the last 10 years, but not to the degree of what we're getting ready to do now. So why is this important? Because religion is sustained by two factors, fear and guilt. And if it's one subject that the church has used for a long time, to keep people in fear and guilt, it is in that subject of tithing. And it has to be corrected, and it's got to be corrected now. I may lose some friends. Preachers may not ever invite me no more. Because tithe is not a down payment for salvation. So, the teaching that if a man does not go to hell, if a man does not pay tithe, he will go to hell, is not true. Okay, so when Malachi said, you rob me in tithes and offering. God is trying to use a figure of speech that is called hyperbole. That is exaggeration for the purpose of effect. The same thing Jesus used when he said, if your eyes will cause you to sin, remove it. If your hand will cause you to sin, cut it off. Okay, so God is just trying to strike the importance of what he's trying to communicate to us. He's not saying that if a man does not pay tithes, you will go to hell. The third thing I like to, to correct is that um, whether a man pays tight or not does not make that man spiritual. Paying tight does not make a man spiritual. Not paying does not make him unspiritual. Does not make him unspiritual. Okay. The number four thing I love to say is that we should be very careful the way we, we, we ask for tithes. We should be very careful the way we collect that in church. I see an overemphasis on tithes in church today that I don't see in the apostolic church. For me, I think that what we should emphasize is Jesus. When Jesus becomes fully formed,